Hi everyone, I'm Chris Murray, owner of Elevation Wheel Company. Today we're going to show you how to glue a tubular tire to any tubular ring. The first step before you begin anything, install any valve extenders you may need for your particular rim before you do anything else. That way you don't forget it when you go to glue the tire on and you can't inflate your tire. After letting your tire stretch overnight, then you want to inflate your tire partially so you can squeeze it into this figure eight shape while it's still hold shape. It will make mounting or applying the glue a whole lot easier for you. Uh, from here, we're literally just painting the glue onto the tire's base tape and very important to keep the layers thin and even and go fully to the edge of the base tape on both sides. That way you get really good adhesion. Once you get that first layer of glue on, you want to let it dry until it's no longer tacky. Uh, some tires like these Vittorias with a really thin base tape don't absorb much glue so you can really get away with one layer of glue. If you're running other tires that have a little thicker base tape, especially like Continentals, you really want to do two layers of glue. Um, kind of use your best judgment, but you want to make sure that the base tape is completely saturated in glue and you don't want to do that in one thick glob, you want to do it in multiple thin layers. Uh, but on these Vittoria track tubulars, one layer works just fine. It's held on 400 pound tandems for me, so I know it's a solid setup. Um, once this dries, then we'll move over to the rim. Alright, so your next step in gluing a tire is making sure you get the rim bed as clean as you possibly can. Uh, especially on a new rim, start by peeling off these stickers. Don't be that guy that leaves stickers on a rim and gluing a tire over it. It's just bad form. So peel these off and then we're going to scuff the surface with Scotch-Brite to get any mold release off and give us a really good base for wiping down any remaining contaminants. So peel the stickers, scrub down with Scotch-Brite if it's a new rim, and then we'll go through with rubbing alcohol and acetone to get it absolutely spotless before we apply our first layer of glue. When you're doing this, a good reference point is always start and finish at the valve hole. It just makes it really easy to know where you're at. So see all that black stuff? That is what we're trying to get rid of. When we're done, you won't see any black on the rag after wiping it with acetone or rubbing alcohol. I just like to start with rubbing alcohol because I think it's a little less harsh for getting the bulk of the material off and then I do the final cleaning with acetone just because I think it's a little bit stronger. But either one is just fine on its own if you want to. That's just the method that works for me. This is what you want, a completely clean rag after wiping the rim. Once you get to that point, you know that you're good to start applying your first layer. Now, this is this is how we glue a or prep a brand new rim for gluing tubulars. If you're wanting to do a glue a new tire onto a previously glued rim, it's a similar process but a little bit different. Uh, 
so I'll show you that now. So if you have a rim that's been previously glued before, you don't have to strip it completely to clean if you don't want to, um, especially if you know the background of the rim. Um, personally, I don't like to mix glues, and if the rim, if the old glue is really uh, dry and chunky and nasty, I usually will scrape that off and start fresh. But this tire, or this rim I previously glued a few months ago, he just flatted. So I know what brand of glue was used, and I know that the glue's not crazy old. So here, I'll just scrape off any big chunks that are remaining, which there really aren't many on this. And then I will wipe it down with acetone and get it ready for another layer of glue. All right, now that we made it around the rim the first time, we will let this cure. Uh, basically, you want to let it go until it's no longer tacky. Ideally, you want to wait a full day between layers, but if you let it get to the point where it's not tacky at all, you can go ahead and move on to the next layer. Um, it works well. I know everyone says you need 24 hours. You can make it work quicker, especially if you're in a dry and warm climate like Colorado. So let's move on to the wheel that's never been glued. Again, this process is the exact same as the tire that's as the wheel that's been mount, had a tire mounted before, but we're just going to add an extra layer of glue. So we'll do this layer, let it dry to where it's stack free, add another layer, and then we'll be ready to do the final layer to mount the tire with. All right, so now that we're ready to mount the tire, um, we're going to go ahead and inflate the tubular to just enough air pressure to hold its shape. It's still pretty squishy, very low pressure. You just want it to hold its shape. I've already added another layer of glue, uh, another layer of glue to the rim we're going to mount it to. Uh, again, very thin layer, uh, just thin, even, um, still wet. So we're getting ready to mount this on. Uh, first, before you do that, make sure you get your tire orientation right, uh, especially on like cross tires. Track tires, it's a little less critical, but being a track wheel, I like to make sure the logo's on the down track side. Doesn't really matter, but it makes me feel better. Um, and then if you're doing it on a floor like this that you like, uh, put something down on the floor before you do this, that way you don't make a mess. And I also like to wear an apron because you're gonna put the wheel into your chest and you'll probably get glue on your shirt. Um, so, just doing that because typically I do this in the shop, it's got a rubber floor here. We actually like this floor to look good, so I just needed the space to film video. So, wheel on the ground, lean it against your legs, double check tire orientation, and then starting at the valve, you want to pull the tire evenly, slide it through the valve hole, Some of these deep section rims are a little tricky. So once you get your valve through, evenly pull the tire around. Uh, stretch the tire evenly as you go, pushing down. Some tires you have to pull, do this a lot harder than others, like Continentals are super tight, so stretch it as hard as you can. These Vittorias are pretty easy, so you don't have to go as crazy. 
Once you get that on, you want to quickly look around the base tape, make sure it's as even as you can possibly make it. Just making corrections as you see fit. This one went on pretty good, it looks like. Don't worry if you get a little glue on the sidewalls, it doesn't make a difference. You just want it to make sure it's sticking well, and then you'll spin it to check that it's round, which this one is. Once it looks pretty good, you're going to go ahead and inflate it. I like to start at around 60 PSI or so on a track tire, a little less on a cross tire. And then double check it because sometimes it moves around a little on you. This one's looking good. And then I will go ahead and pump it up to its maximum pressure. On um, these Vittoria track tubulars, you can go well over 170, I think up to 220. But my pump max is out at 170, so that's where we will go. Double check that it's still good. And then I like to roll it on the ground just to make sure the tire is seated as well as you possibly can get it. So it looks pretty good. And that's all it takes to glue a tubular. Pretty simple, just a little time consuming when you factor in all the time between steps and the cleaning, especially on an older rim that's got some nasty glue. Um, but yeah, if you like the video, be sure to click the subscribe button. Uh, this is our first video. We'll keep a lot going. Um, but yeah, looking forward to keeping the whole video trend going. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks.